talking about the righteousness of the kingdom. How do we enforce righteousness? If you say, seek ye first the kingdom of God, it, is, it means seeking, you know, like I've, told you, I've taught you here, and you know that, that the kingdom of God comprises of two words. Is the kingdom, I mean, the kingdom, the word kingdom comprises of two words, the king and his dominion. So seeking first the kingdom of God is saying seeking to, to know the king and seeking to be the expression of the king, seeking to be like him, and also seeking to advance his dominion so that the rule and the dominion and the authority of the king might come to take possession and have preeminence over all facets of life. Now, so that is talking about the king and the kingdom itself. But what about his righteousness? Now, the righteousness of God is about bringing to the earth the lifestyle and the values and the virtues that makes the kingdom of God what it is. So when God says, let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, it is the virtues and the values of that kingdom that, we, that is expressed as the righteousness of the kingdom. So now, and one, there is no way righteousness of the kingdom could be or would be expressed on the earth without the judgment of God. So that's why the scriptures we spoke about from Jeremiah 9, 23, 24, the other day, yesterday, was talking about, it says, you, you should only boast in one thing, that you know me and you understand me. And it says, because I am, then it goes on to, others, to explain to us what it means to understand him. If you understand me, then you will seek my just, judgment. You will see that I am a God of judgment. You will see that I'm a God of loving kindness. Then you will see that I, I mean, you will seek to know me as a God of judgment, as a God of loving kindness, and as a God of, uh, of uh, what well, the third one there, of righteousness. So, but then there will be no righteousness without judgment. You see, if you look into the, into the nature and the, the acts of God, you will see that righteousness normally comes to reign after God decrees justice. Justice opens the door for righteousness. So the aspect that I want to start talking about is, is the first topic I want to address is uh, re restoring back to the church or opening the eyes of the church to see herself as the judge of the earth. Now, most of the time when we talk, talk about the church and even when we speak in churches, not so often we hear the role of the church as the judge of the earth. We are not even mainly taught about that. Okay, we sometimes we have been told or been taught that we are the king, that we are the kings and the priests and things like that. But the church has not really been equipped to bring to act as the as the arm of God to establish justice and thereby bringing righteousness to reign on the earth as one of the major functions of the local church. So if we are going to change, uh, bring about a change in our society or in our country, we must realize and we must, be, we must have the capability to see ourselves as the instruments of God, as the means by which God wishes to establish his righteousness on the earth. Now, and for, for, uh, for, for you to understand this, to better understand this, I would like us to open our Bibles to the book of uh, Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 42, from verses 1 to 5. Read it, please. Isaiah chapter 42. 1 to 5. 1 through 5. <clears throat> Behold, my servant whom I uphold, my elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break. The smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he have set judgment in the earth. And the isles shall wait for his law. Thus saith God the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, 
he that giveth breath unto the people upon it, and spirit to them that walk therein. Amen. Now, a careful uh, examination of this scripture will tell us that although this scripture is basically or primarily talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, but then if you examine it properly, you will also see that actually that passage is not just talking about Jesus, it's also referring to us, the body of Christ today, as the extension of, of, of Christ because Jesus is the head and if Jesus is the head of the body and we are the body it means whatsoever addresses Jesus whatsoever pertains to Jesus is also talking about us so if in this passage we are seeing Jesus as the judge and Jesus, we are seeing Jesus as the, and somebody that is called to bring forth judgment to the Gentiles now verse 1 it says behold my servant talking of Jesus and that is talking about us because he's the head, we are the body. It's talking about the body of Christ through Jesus. They say, behold my servant whom I uphold, all right? Mine elect in whom my soul delighted. Now, why is the soul of God the Father delighted about the Lord Jesus Christ? All right? Why is the act, why are the actions of Jesus making God the Father rejoice? What is it that Jesus does? All right? What, what, which particular, you know, Jesus did a lot of things. What action in particular is bringing that level of delight to the heart of the Father? So, and because if you know what Jesus does and what is causing the father to rejoice and delight to be in his heart because of the actions of Jesus. If you know the right thing Jesus does that's causing delight to come to the heart of the father and you do it, yeah. you come on the highway of pleasing God. Yeah. So if we know how Jesus delighted the heart of the father, you could achieve and attain the same thing if you could just position yourself properly. Are you listening to me? So he says, in whom my soul delights, because I have put my spirit upon him. And what will he do with that spirit? You see, there is a purpose for the outpouring of the spirit. Because some of us think the purpose for the outpouring of the spirit is for religious activity. So speak in tongues, to pray, to go and worship and la 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 la, like everybody, I can also sing in tongues. But the reason and the purpose for, the, for, for God putting and pouring out the Spirit upon Jesus is for one purpose. And that purpose is the same purpose that making the heart of the Father to be delighted in him. He says, I have put my Spirit upon him. He shall bring forth. What? I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Judgment. Shigeri Yamahamando. The church has lost her role and position to be the judge of God upon the earth. And we don't even know how to function as the judgment or as the justice carrier, judgment uh, arm of the Almighty God. But Jesus knew, you see. He was effective because he knew what grat gratifies and what delights the heart of the Father like nothing else. Which is bring justice, establish judgment on the earth. That makes God's heart delighted like no other thing. So, he says, he shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. All right? Shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. So, if that is why God said he is pouring out his spirit upon Jesus, and if that is what Jesus is doing, that is causing the Father to be delighted about him, He's telling me something as the extension of Christ. If I am his body, if I am the one that was left here on the earth while he went to be with the Father, and if I'm supposed to continue his work here on earth, uh -huh, it means this is an aspect of my Christian work and of my, uh, my work with God that must not be neglected. Yes. That must not be neglected. Because in Acts chapter 1, verses 1 to 2, it says, I've written you, O Theophilus, of the things that Jesus began to do. But he really never finished it. 
Because he began it so that we might continue it. So God is actually looking at us as a continuation of the justice of God on the earth. And of the judgment of God upon the earth. That thereby placing the heart of the Father. And then the spirit of God that we have. The anointing that he has granted us. The power, the trust that he has you know, welded on us. Is supposed to be used to promote justice on the earth. So, now let's look into Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 16. Verse 16. Now, I have noticed that when we're talking about Jesus receiving the Spirit of God, delighting the heart of the Father, and we as his body, you know, he's not talking about us as precious. So every believer, not only precious, should, should promote God's justice on the earth and should be representing, representing the judgment of God. So all of us is demanded from us, is required from us to, to be an extension of God's judgment on the earth. Yes. I have seen the travail which God have given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. 316. Oh, I'm sorry. And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment, that wickedness was there, and the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. Come again. And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment, that wickedness was there. And now, the now, listen, Pastor, the way you're reading it, he's saying, I saw under the earth that in the place of what? R huh? Yeah. In the place of righteousness, in the place of justice and righteousness, righteousness, seek ye first, seeing the priority of God right now, the righteousness of God, which is, is justice, is what is primary in the heart of God. It's the heartbeat of God. And then, now, any time, God sees the absence and the voidness of righteousness and justice. You know, you know, something replaces it. Iniquity replaces it. So when God sees that, he's breaking the heart of the Father. Now read that verse 16 again. And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment. In the place of judgment, what is it saying? That wickedness was there. Instead of just righteousness and justice, what was there? Wicked wickedness. Was there. It's because when, they, when you refuse to administer justice and judgment on the earth, wickedness reigns and rules in that society. Now, the reason why we have all the crisis, all the evil, of the, all the wickedness we have in our society in America today is because the eyes of the church is totally closed or blind to, the, to her place as the executor of judgment for God. Amen. Judging homosexuality. Condemning immorality. Condemning you no know, bisexuality and all kind of things. Condemning unrighteousness of any form. If the church would not be the, the, the spokesman of God. The arm of God. The extension of God's values. Righteousness. On the earth. God's heart is broken. He said, I am saying the place where it's supposed to be judgment. In the place of judgment on the earth. Look what I'm saying. Because when it's, it's absence, judgment and justice denied is justice what? Oh, ju justice delayed is justice denied. Martin Luther King. So if all, the, it, I would say the, uh, another way, the way we have done it this day is silence. Justice. Silence about judgment is justice retreated. Yes. So, read it again. And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment, that wickedness was there, and the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. Can you see that? In the place of judgment, what was there? Wickedness. Wickedness. And in place of righteousness, what Iniquity was there? Iniquity was there. See. 
So that's why that question is so key. Seek ye for the kingdom of God and its righteousness. Righteousness is what brings the values of the kingdom of God. God, the values that rule and the, that, that makes the lifestyle of heaven is the righteousness of God. So those values, those righteousness, we are decreeing them. We are the arm of God. We are the extension of that kingdom to decree that righteousness and that justice on the earth by condemning wickedness and by annullifying uh, all kind of uh, iniquity. You see. Now, let's go back to that Isaiah 5 and 42 again. Isaiah 42. You will see a careful study of that passage in verse 1, verse 3, and verse 4. We will see that same word coming back again. The word judgment. The word justice. Talking about Jesus. This is one of the main passion and one of the main missions of Jesus on the earth to bring judgment. And if that is one of his main purpose, just like he brought salvation, it means it's supposed to be one of the main agendas of the church. The church is totally silent about it. So let's read, you read verse 1, verse 3, and verse 4. Behold my servant, whom I uphold my elect, in whom my soul delighteth, I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. Now, shall he not quench? Yes. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. Yes, verse 4. He shall not fail nor be discouraged till, the, till he have set judgment in the earth, and the okay. isles shall wait for his law. Now, you underline each time you see the word judgment. In verse 1, it says... I have put my spirit upon him for what purpose? It explains it in that verse 1. That he shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. So it is judgment that will cause nations to listen. It is judgment and justice that we bring to nations that will see there is justice on the earth. Now, let me tell you what. What is making the Arab world to be crazy up to the, about the West? What is making the, the, them to be angry? It's not because America is living better than the as, uh, Arab world, no. There are more people that are living, but because they see that in the American foreign policy, who they, and they think Americans and are Christians and the West is Christian, that there is no justice whatsoever. That's what they think. They think there is not, it's not fear. There is no justice. There is no demonstration of justice in the Palestinian Israeli uh, conflict in, in the world, in the foreign that, that the foreign that America represents injustice. That is actually what is coming from the West, from the Middle, Middle, Middle East, really. So justice is a major thing if you want to get the Gentiles. Gentiles are very particular about justice. Now you look at you look at, a, at the Mexico Mexico immigration problem. We have the America immigration problem they have with Mexico. Now, what is making all the illegal immigrants to rush to this country? It's because they think America is not fear in the fact that this country, which is so wealthy here, is, very, uh, is bordering, is just by the border of one of the poorest nations in the world. It's not fear. You don't just think about yourself and think about your good and think that you are going to live in peace when other people are living just close by you in poverty. The first time I went to the Caribbean, you know, Jamaica and things, I was so shocked to see how much poverty, this is a nearby, in a, how can America be so close by this country and it's not doing anything about it? That's why Hugo Chavez and people like, like you know, Cuban president, Fidel Castro, are more effective in those countries and giving more results than America because America is totally consumed with our own pleasure and with our own survival and there is no justice. And you know, those countries, they are particular about justice. You look why the people want uh, 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 are coming from all over the world, running here. They want to dupe and do things like that because they, they feel it's not fear. You know, some people, you know, just, just, so if you really want to win nations and Gentiles, judgment is one of the key. You must be particular about justice. You must release the judgment and the justice of God, which is the righteousness of God. So that's what we see in verse one. Then in verse three, it says, a bruised reed shall not Shall he not break? So it's not going to be by war. It's not going to be by, you know, declaring war and things like that. He says, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment. Unto what? 
So judgment produces what? Truth. I can't hear you. Truth. Judgment leads, judgment executed brings forth truth. Judgment produces, paves the way to righteous, for righteousness. When there is no just, judgment, judgment and there is no justice, truth can never reign. And one of the reasons why the American society has been more effective than most, society, most modern society is because the judicial system of this country is one of the, it's one of the most effective judicial systems in the world, although it still has all its uh, you know, weaknesses and uh, lapses and things like that. But look, go to other countries, it's even worse. You, because 80, 70% of all, 70% of all, Actually, 75% of all lawsuits in the world happen in America. Because other people don't go to court. They just shoot one another and do, give vibes and do things like that. So because of their you know, judicial system here, that's, why, that's one of the reasons why the country has been blessed. Because there is no, when there is justice, truth reigns. Corruption is reduced and trust is increased. So, and you know, 90% of all lawyers in the world practice in America. <laughs> of course, they might be suing you for all the wrong reasons as well, but no problem. It means that people look for justice here. Justice is one of the basic fundament foundations for building of any, any, any nation. Justice is very important. Verse 4. I'm sorry, just forget about the time now because I'm getting to the to the thing. So we are not going to go for that break. Forget it. Just going to keep on going. Verse 4. It shall not fail, nor be discouraged. But it takes the process of justice and ju takes time. It takes time. So it's not going to be discouraged. It's not going to fail till he has set judgment on the earth. Because judgment is the key to subduing the earth and to causing the earth to accept this God. Because he's a God of justice. And the eyes shall wait for his law because they know his law is going to bring justice. So see how many times we are seeing the word justice. Jesus came to judge sin, iniquity, and unrighteousness. That's what John chapter 16 verse 8 tells us. One of the main reasons for the Holy Spirit coming is to judge sin, iniquity, and unrighteousness. It came because of judgment. So it requires for us to continue as the church in establishing just judgment and justice in the society. And in, 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 in Revelation chapter 5 verse 10, when he calls us kings and priests, he is expecting us as kings to be instruments and to be zealous about the justice of God. This is the only way the Gentiles and the world, we could impact the world when they see just, justice and judgment coming from us. So true judgment, truth reigns on the earth. God reigns on the earth. Truth means God. The values of God, the kingdom of God comes to the earth through, uh, through, through judgment. Now, let me show you one passage that will really impress you deeply. It's Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and, nine and 7. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a popular scripture, but I want you to say something there today. <laughs> Verses 6 and 7. Yeah. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. All right. Of the increase of the kingdom of God, of the government of God, that shall be an end, end, right? Now keep on reading. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it, to establish it with judgment. Now, stop. What does God use to establish the increase of his kingdom and his, and, 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 his king, and, and, and his government? Now, read that verse 7 again. Of the increase of his government. All right. God is interested in the increase of his government and his peace, right? Yes. Okay, there shall be no end. Then? There shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to All order right. it. So God is interested in the increase of his government and peace and his kingdom and his order to establish it. How? Really? 
to establish it with judgment. To establish its government, the government and rule of God with what? Judgment. With what? Judgment. With what? Judgment. So we have been talking about the kingdom of God and is, you know, you know, the kingdom of God on the earth. How is that kingdom going to be established and affirmed on the earth? The kingdom and the government, the order of God on the earth can only be established through one means. Through what? Judgment. Judgment and justice. The same thing. Judgment. Read it. And with justice from henceforth even forever. Amen. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. You see. Somebody has got to be zealous about the righteousness of God again. If the church will not embrace the righteousness of God. You know, the church has become so compromised. The church has become so indifferent to iniquity, wickedness, unrighteousness. We have become so, so, so cold that we are almost mixed up. We are almost the same like the world. Our standard has become so lost. Our standard has become so reduced. We don't even know when to when to notice unrighteousness or wickedness or iniquity. We don't even see them again. We just see it as a lifestyle and we just see ourselves as barely escaping. No! We are supposed to be coming from above and we are supposed to be condemning every unrighteousness near us and to be bringing the justice and the righteousness of God and enforcing it upon our generation. Hallelujah. Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 8, verses 16 to 17. So the church needs to be waking up big time. You know, can you imagine, we're talking about one of the main functions and, and, and callings of the church right now. And can you just wait a minute and think about what the church has been busy doing? Just think about it. You just think about it. What has the church been busy doing? If this is one thing that is delight, that delights the heart of God like, never, like nothing else. If this is one thing, one reason why God poured out his spirit upon the church. What is the church been busy doing? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Having nice time, having good time in church. Then going to the society and not even speaking a word. Not even opening our mouth. Not even having any effect. Not even... Knowing what we are supposed to be doing with the spirit of God we have or with the word of God we have or with the authority we have. Just being like breaking the heart of God. A new church is supposed to arise, my friends. Yes. Zechariah. These are the things. Verses 16 to 17. These are the things that you shall do. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. Execute. All right. What, how, how is Righteousness practically expressed. How is justice practically expressed? Now, it says, these are the things that you should do. This is righteousness. Speak the truth. Practical stuff. Be transparent. Truth. It's an expression of justice of God. Right? Yes. Speak the truth. Speak the truth to his neighbor. Execute the judgment of truth. And peace in your gates. Execute judgment of truth. Affirm truth. Condemn anything that is a lie or deception or, or flattering or against the truth. Establish it in your gate. Everybody's got his own gate. Everybody's got his own sphere of life. Bring truth to your sphere of life. Everybody, either you are a church member or you are an ordinary church goer, and affirm the truth where God is trusted into it. Read that again. These are the things that you shall do. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. Right. Execute the judgment that of is truth. truth on the level or truth on the level of your life, personal life. The second level of, the tr- of, uh, of, of justice. Execute the judgment of truth and peace in your Bring gates. Bring judgment to your gates, to your area of influence. Make sure that in your company you have values. You have codes of, of conduct. You have ethics. You have standards. That there are some things that are not done around you. There are some things that are not tolerated around you. That you are zealous about the truth of God. And that you condemn and pronounce judgment upon everything that is against the nature and the value and the character of God the Father. Yes. And let none of your Imagine evil in your hearts against his neighbor. Let none of you even begin to imagine. Know that this is the highest, the, no, no, commandment. 
Just love everybody. Don't even begin to think about hurting anybody. Yes. Mm. Ooh. And love no f- <laughs> and love no false. Yes. Love the truth. Love no false oath. Hate falsehood. Hate falsehood. Right. For all these things, for all for all these are things that I hate, saith the Lord. You see, hate what God hates. That is the expression of God's justice and judgment on the earth. By hating iniquity, by hating falsehood, by hating what God hates, you are bringing God's judgment on the earth. And people are attracted to judgment, to justice. Now, let's go to another scripture. Let me take you to Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs 31, verses 8 to 9. Are you following me? So I'm talking today on the topic, restoring to the church the role, her role as opening the eyes of the church to see her role as the judge of the earth. All right? Are you in Proverbs 31? Read verses 8 to 9 for me. Open thy mouth for the dumb in the causes of all. No, come again. Open thy mouth for the dumb in the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Okay, now, you, you, do you notice what he's saying there? God wants us to become def- the defenders of the weak. That is justice right there for you. That is judgment. When you who are strong, you never close your eyes at the weak. When you see somebody who is, who is weaker than you, and you become his advocate, open your mouth for the dumb in the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. So people, you know, people want to take advantage. They want to destroy. They want to, they, they, they just feel it is their right to appoint for destruction people who are weak, people who are dumb. People cannot defend themselves. Dumb here is a symbol of people who are weak, who cannot defend themselves, who cannot speak for themselves. What is justice? What is judgment? Stand for them. Stand for the weak. Defend them. Hop over them. Speak for the dumb. And those appointed for destruction, not because of their fault, but because they are taking advantage of them, stand in the gap. That is justice. But you know today, that, that, that isn't my business. It doesn't concern me. I don't, I don't want problem. I don't want any trouble in my life. I have enough trouble of my own. The church just walks away. We don't want to attract our additional problems or challenges. That's why we are not being used by God. That's why we are not effective on the earth. That's why the kingdom is not being established. We are too egocentric. God help us. Wake us up and make us people like Jesus again. Wake us up, Jesus, and let your passion become our passion. Let your value become our values. Let your mission become our goal and our objective in life. These are the things that delight the mind, the heart of God. You wonder what people talk about in churches. We water down everything and lost the mind and purpose of God. God help us. The next verse. Open thy mouth. Judge righteously and plead the cause of the poor and needy. Say, what is justice? What is judgment on the earth? The open the mind for the dumb. Uh, defend the people appointed for destruction. Then open your mouth. That's why we must have social organizations, NGOs. In our church in Kiev, we have over 300 NGOs, 3,000 NGOs, 3,000 organizations, 3,000. Of ordinary members of the church. These are just church goers who have, who have adopted some pains in the society. It has become their personal fight. Because they've got to open up and speak against the injustice in the society. Anything that is facing the society, any condition, anything that is oppressing people, anything that is destroying any life, anybody, 
we adopt it and make an NGO out of it and cause it to be our personal battle. Because Bible say, the God says, open your mouth. That create a platform. That's what it means. See any problem, see any challenge, adopt it. Create a platform for it. Create an organization. Begin to speak in their defense. What are you fighting for? What are you defending? Who are you speaking for? Who are you bringing God's justice to? Are you really speak, bringing God's justice anywhere? Where is, the, where is it that you see lack of justice in this society? And where are you speaking now? Sometimes unbelievers, secular organizations, the ones we call humanistic, they are doing the kingdom work better than we do. Some of them, they are the ones protecting the animals. They are the ones protecting the women. They are the ones protecting the minorities. They are the ones protecting the, the children. They are the ones protecting the adoption agencies and things like that. But we Christians, we don't, we think spirituality is just go to church to pray. We missed it. And that's why we are creating all kinds of fads like spiritual warfare. This one, take the plane, go up and be delivering people every week. Rubbish! Do justice, somebody! My God, help us to bring God's righteousness to the earth. Do real things that affect society. Do real things that affect the nation. Do real things that delight the heart of God. Forget about your religiosity. Spending whole ages singing some, going to some repeat, you know, rehearsals to some sing some song day in, day out, and never change anybody's life for good. Amen. Taking things like that are just supposed to be expressional, that are supposed to be second, secondary, making it the whole purpose of Christian faith. Then neglecting justice. Matthew 23, 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Woe unto you, not just scribes and Pharisees, but Christians of today. Woe unto you, charismatics. Woe unto you, Pentecostals. Woe unto you, evangelicals. What are you busy doing? We're doing the same thing the Pharisees were doing. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and anus and cumin. See, American church, how much time we dedicate telling people to bring money. Well, that's the only thing we talk about. We've missed it. Just like they were doing. Yes. And have omitted the weightier matters of the law. We've omitted the weightier the wealthier, the real friend that God came for before meeting it. Which is? Judgment. Which is judgment. Mercy. Listen, which is number one thing that God really concerns himself about. This is Jesus speaking right now. This is New Testament right now. God says the really wealthy things that God, that God was trying to communicate through Moses, that God was trying to speak through, through the commandments, the real wealthy thing, the real thing that is heavy in the heart of God is judgment. Be pursuer of God. Not just talk about money all day long. Who will do justice to them people being oppressed? Who will do justice to them people being deceived? Who will speak out for the dumb? Who will speak out for the weakly? Who will take the burden of God high and say there is God on the earth? And the weak could now live freely and, and sleep freely because they are made of God and they are people of God in town to defend their interests. Just judgment is number one the, no, the desire and the burden of the heart of God. Yeah? Mercy. Mercy, which is love. And faith. And faith. He's talking about practical stuff. Go do it. Go practice it. You remember what I told you yesterday? The story of the, of the, of the good Samaritan? Don't just be religious like the Levite going to sing. So he left the man. Don't just be religious like the priest going to preach. Because to him, serving God means preaching. Because to the other guy, serving God means worship. But real justice being neglected. 
mercy, love, neglected. And faith, we think it's just something of the earth. We don't know faith. It's about practice and action. Isaiah chapter 1. It really takes us the state of the church. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 16 to 17. Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead now, for the widow. Excellent. Now, what is justice in the eyes of God? Learn to do well, that's your action, that's your faith. Seek judgment, don't just Say, I live well. No, it's not enough. Seek judgment. Just like you seek God. Seek judgment. Just like you seek the kingdom. That is righteousness. Seek judgment for other people. Seek judgment for the weak. Seek judgment for the un un unequals of your society. Seek it. Judgment is something to be sought after and to be pursued. Then he said, relief. Relief the oppressed. He's not saying you have the calling to be a social worker or you have the calling to be a rehabilitation center worker. Relieve the oppressed. It's a command. If you are a kingdom carrier, if you belong to God, if you carry the heart of the Father, relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. You see anybody fatherless? The orphanage ministry is not some people's calling. It's nobody is called to it. Everybody is called to it. Become a Christian, my friend. Because sometimes we think being a Christian means I don't smoke and I don't go to uh, pubs. Being a Christian means doing something much more constructive than all your religious vocabularies and terminologies. Plead for somebody. Plead for the widow. That's why in our church, I really advocate that everybody has a ministry, should have a ministry, a, a, an NGO, a social organization that you are using to be your arm, your voice of really advancing something for the kingdom constructively. Don't just sit in them pews and them shoes day in, day out and not changing anything in your world and you say you're a Christian. What Christ? Who, which God are you serving? Don't come them sit in them church chairs and saying that that way you are placing God. Which God are you placing by sitting down? You have been doing the same thing the pub people do. Only they go to the pub to relieve their own stress. You go to church to relieve your own press. I mean, your own uh, your stress. They go out there to drink and smoke. You go in there to dance and you are the same thing if you don't pursue judgment and justice. It's all about you. It's all about you to feel better. It's all about you to re be relieved of your stress. It's all about you to feel good. It's all about you to get something. It's not about God's agenda. We are all in trouble. Here comes again the generation of the Pharisees. That same chapter, Isaiah chapter 1, verses 21 to 27. 20, that same chapter, Isaiah 1, only this time, read verses 21 to 27. How is the faithful city become a harlot? I'm talking of the church of Israel. It was full of judgment, righteousness. You see, church used to be full of judgment. That's what made Jesus to go from city to city when he was on the earth. That's what made the apostles never to find peace for themselves. They left their homes and their families. They were seeking and establishing God's judgment from coast to coast. See, this house used to be full of justice and judgment. Yes. Righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. See what is happening in the church? Does that not look like today's church to you? Yes. Thy silver is become dross. Yes. Thy wine mixed with water. You see? Thy princes are rebellious. My God. Companions of thieves. Hmm. Everyone loveth gifts and follow after rewards. Do you recognize that, Ooh, church? Oh, Jesus. Everybody asks ask the question, what does that have for me? What do you have inside there for me? What is the gain for me? Everybody is after rewards. They judge not the fatherless. Neither the... You see the sin of the church. 
the judge nor the fatherless. If, if, I, I pray that there is none of you here that has a church that doesn't care for the children. I hope there is no one of you here that says he's a pastor and you don't have an outreach to the orphanages and to the orphans, to the fatherless, to the foreigners, to the, to the widows. I hope there is none of you that calls himself a pastor and is silent at the cry of those being led to murder. Yes. Neither does the cause of the widow come unto them. We see now. Therefore saith the Lord. Our whole idea about church is totally been replaced. Artificialized. We have sub substituted the heart of God to artificiality, to, to show, to we've replaced it by you no know, entertainment, by you know, lights and buildings and those are now, have now become the symbols of religiosity and of spirituality instead of the things that border the heart of God from the foundations of the earth. How could we go so far? How could we fall so low? How could we miss God when we read the Bible every day? Some people don't even see these things. They don't even read them. Because they say, they beat themselves in the chest and say, I'm not a Pharisee. I don't need to read it. The Pharisees of yesterday are dead. But what we refuse to recognize is that we have replaced them today. And that's why God didn't remove those pages from the scripture. He left them for us that we might be corrected. But we thought it's obsolete. It's an old scripture meant for the dead people. Oh, how, will, how we would have helped ourselves if we go to apply the scriptures to ourselves again and again. Oh, God, help us. Keep on reading, my friend. Therefore saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, Ah, I will ease me of my adversary and avenge me of my enemies. And I will turn my hand upon thee and purely purge away the dross and take away all thy ten. I will restore thy judges as at first and thy counselors as as the beginning. That is why we are doing what we are doing. That's why the church is speaking today. That's why I'm here talking this thing today. The judges shall arise in Zion again. Hallelujah. And the drawers shall be removed from the church. And God shall ra will raise up people who are zealous for the righteousness of God. And the church of God shall be glorified again. Dignity shall be restored to this house in Jesus' name. Yes. Afterward thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment. What will bring redemption to the, to the church? Judgment. What brings redemption to the church? What? Righteousness. The redemption of the church is, lies in judgment. That's why I say judgment starts first in the house of God. And are converts with righteousness. God help us. Read Isaiah 56 verse 1. Thus saith the Lord. Keep ye judgment and do justice. For my salvation is near to come and my righteousness to be revealed. Yes, salvation of the Lord and God's righteousness comes through justice and judgment. Read it again. Thus saith the Lord, keep ye judgment and keep do judgment. justice. For my justice. salvation is near to come. So you see, what is salvation that is coming? That's revival. Everybody talking about revival. Revival, revival. We all need revival. When is revival coming? Well, revival lies. The way, the pathway to revival lies through in justice and judgment. Then salvation which will come. Read it again. Thus saith the Lord, keep ye judgment, judgment and do justice. Justice and the result, massive salvation. Yeah, read it. Thus saith the Lord, keep ye judgment and do justice. For my salvation is near to come. And my righteousness to be revealed. You see, righteousness of God, salvation of God 
It's made to come when justice and judgment are established. That is revival. Anybody listening to me today? Deuteronomy 16, 20. Deuteronomy 16, verse 20. That which is altogether just shall thou follow, that thou mayest live and inherit the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Again. That which is altogether just shall thou follow. That which is altogether just. For my, my, my brethren, don't just listen to this as a good message. And say, oh, we've got such a good message. Begin a follower of all that is just. And begin to affirm justice and judgment in your vicinity from today on. It starts with one person at a time. Go ahead and read it. That which is altogether dust shall thou follow, that thou mayest live and inherit the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Judgment is the key to inheriting the promises of God. Be zealous about the justice of God. Then everything God meant for you shall surely come to pass. But sometimes we want to be religious and just be busy with some activities and just think God will reward us because of those activities. Let's read one more scripture before I move on. Proverbs 21 verse 3. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Did you hear that? They're asking what verse. Proverbs 21 verse 3. Let's read it again, please. To do justice and judgment is Let's more acceptable. Let's say justice and judgment again. Let's say it together. Justice and judgment. Justice and judgment. Is more important. Is more important. Than all your religious activities. Than all your religious activities. I go to church, I spray, I smoke, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't do this, I don't do that. Good. But also begin to do what really bothers the heart of God. What brings the light to his heart? Begin to affirm justice and judgment. It's more important than all sacrifices. You know, all these things we're doing, they are just sacrifices. But with the thing that really bothers God is his righteousness. His righteousness comes to reign through justice and judgment. Thank you for asking me that question. All right. Do you want me to go, out, to go ahead and to move to the next topic? Okay, the same direction. So I said, opening the eyes of the church. So that is what I spoke about. That, but now, I'm going, to, I'm going to speak on the topic, restoring the spirit of judgment back to the church. The spirit of judgment. Isaiah chapter 4, obviously chapter 26. Isaiah chapter 26. Verse 9 to 10. With my soul have I desired thee in the night. Yea, with my spirit within me will I seek thee early. For when thy judgments are in the earth, when thy judgments are on the earth, what happens? The inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. I can hear you. Come again. The inhabitants of the earth will learn, learn righteousness. Righteousness when what happens? When there is judgment. Come again. When thy judgment is on the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. I want us all to read that phrase together. Isaiah 26, verse 9 through 10. Verse 10 again. Verse 9. Verse 10. Let favor be skewed to the wicked. Yet will he not learn righteousness? In the land of uprightness will he deal unjustly. And will not behold the majesty of the Lord. That is saying, don't, don't cover up for people who practice wickedness, who do injustice. When you cover for them, they will never learn the judgment of God. They will never learn the fear of God. They will never see God. When there is no justice in the society, people don't see God. People don't see the majesty of God. They could go to church. They could practice everything. They could, the churches could be full of them. 
but they will really not know God. So justice is what really brings the, magni- the ma- magnificence of God to light when, God, when there is justice. So he's saying when there is the judgment, righteousness prevails, righteousness rule and reign. So read it. Verse 10. Let favor be skewed to the wicked. Yet will he not learn righteousness? So don't give favor to the wicked. Don't cover up for the wicked. Don't begin to do as if he didn't do anything. Judge him. So it is better to judge the wicked than to cover up for him. He would never learn righteousness by covering up for him. Don't say, well, let's just pity him. Maybe he will get to know. No, it is punish him if he's done something wrong. It is only when you punish him. It is only when you discipline him that he will learn. You don't teach him by saying, well, let's just cover for him. Let's just uh, have mercy on him. No, there's got to be some, uh, amount, some amount of punishment meant out. Yes. In the land of uprightness, will he deal, will he deal unjustly? And will he not behold the majesty of the Lord? Continue. Is it that oh, you finished reading yeah, verse 10? Verse 10. No, it, uh, where is it where it said the judgment, uh, the righteousness on the earth? The... Nine, verse oh, nine. Oh, okay, verse nine. Let's say that again. Okay. With my soul have I desired thee in the night. Yea, with my spirit within me will I seek thee early. For when thy judgments are in the earth, you the see, inhabitants. You see, so it means the purpose for prayers, the purpose for fasting is for what? To bring God's judgment on the earth. So he said, I will not sleep at night. Praying all night. I will withdraw from eating. I will fast and pray. Why? Just that your judgment will come. Because if you're, but the reason we fast and pray today is for me to be anointed. It's for me to be this. It's for me to be that. We got it all wrong. It's no more about God. It's no more about what he wants. God have mercy on us. Because he said, if God's judgment could just come, then righteousness rules on the earth. Bring out that phrase. Phrase. Let's read that phrase together. When judgment, yeah. For when thy judgments are in the earth, when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world, the inhabitants of the world, will learn righteousness. Will learn righteousness. Say it again. For when thy judgments are in the earth, for when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants, the inhabitants of the world, of the world, will learn righteousness. Will learn righteousness. Let's all say it again. When thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. What about when its judgment is not on the earth? The inhabitants of the earth, we keep on being wicked. It's like the country I come from. I come from Nigeria. We are millions, tens of millions of Christians. But no idea, no concept of, of righteousness at all. No concept of it. So it doesn't matter because there is no justice. No justice at all. No even doctrine, no theology of justice. And the kind of judgment the people, the church over there talks about, is about judging your enemy. I mean, it's about bringing judgment, pronouncing judgment on some wish and wizard or some, some of your enemy or bringing judgment to some people in your church who goes about, you know, it's not about, it's not even close to what God is talking about. It's about killing somebody. That's what they want to do. So there is no theology of judgment and justice. And so righteousness, although all the people go to church, but righteousness is totally void. Because there is no judgment. So there is no righteousness. You could go to church and still don't walk in the kingdom. So this is kingdom talk right now. So the role of the church and believers as the judge of the earth is one of the most omitted topics in the body of Christ today. Until we begin to take our stand and to decree judgment, nothing can actually cause the righteousness of God to come to our land and nations. Isaiah, the one we just read now, verses 20, 26, I mean, verse, uh, Isaiah 26, verse 9 to 10, clearly tells us that the inhabitants of the earth land righteousness only 
as the judgment of God is not just proclaimed, but established on the earth. Hence, we must seek political offices. Are you listening to me? We must seek political offices for the sole goal and purpose of establishing God's judgment and righteousness over the whole nation through the laws. That is what uh, William Wilberforce, or what's his name? Is it William Wilberforce? Yeah, the, lady, the man that brought about the... What did he do? He was a businessman. His father, father was a businessman. He went and contested. He went and made money in business so, so that he could contest. And he went to political office and he became a parliamentarian. And he spent 40 years of his life just to amend slave trade. Because of him, we are free today in America. Because he understood. He was a believer. He understood judgment from the consent of God. He dedicated his life for one cause. And to one purpose, eliminate this injustice, fight injustice. But how many of us who are Christians today fight injustice? We don't even know what is justice. We don't even have a concept of fighting injustice, of bringing about just judgment. We don't even have a concept of it. We are not even taught. We are not even taught to challenge injustices around us. We are not even taught to, to challenge the ills of our society. We are not even taught that it's an obligation and it's part of our Christian faith. We are not even taught that our faith is not expressed until we really go out and step out and begin to speak against injustice and unrighteousness and wickedness and begin to establish and proclaim God's justice and righteousness upon the earth. So we're supposed to go into business to make money so that we could use the money to create a platform, to create you know, the, 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 to a voice for ourselves so that we'll be able to use the power and the force of money to promote justice in some places. That's why we are supposed to be wealthy, so that we could go and deliver the, 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 the oppressed of this world, the, the, the disadvantage of this world from the hands of the people oppressing them. Psalm, Psalm, Psalm 19, verses 9 to 11. Please. please. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned. And in keeping of them. No, no. Is it, you're reading from verse 9? You said, verse, you said uh, Psalm 19? Yes. Verse 11? No, no. From 9, please. To 11. Yes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true. The judgment of God. They bring about truth, you see. Go ahead. And righteousness altogether. And they bring about, judgment of God bring about, they establish the truth and righteousness, you see. So how do you see God's righteousness? Through judgment. So 11. More to be desired are they than gold. You see, you see what is supposed to be desired? In the church of America today, you see what we are desiring more? We are desiring gold more than everything else. Instead of, look what's supposed to be desired. Everybody who is a who and who preacher in America today, they must talk about money. Look on any program, look on any TV. It's like the, the church, it's like any program is just about getting you to give him money so one way or the other. It's about, it's, it's about anything, especially when there is anointing, it must be crowned by saying, release your money. We are being, be, we are being bewitched. But look what God says we should really desire. Look what God says we should be using our pulpit to promote. Look what God says we should be using our voice to push righteousness and justice. Yes. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. So in keeping justice, in keeping judgment, in keeping righteousness, in promoting these things, there is great reward. But how many of us can beat ourselves in the chest and say, my life is totally dedicated to affirming justice and righteousness all over the nations of the world? See, so that's the role of Jesus. That's what Jesus brought. And that's what we are supposed to continue as the body of Christ. John chapter 5, verse 22 and verse 30. John chapter 5, verse 22 and verse 30. Just two verses. For the Father judgeth no man, but have committed all judgment unto the Son. You see, the Father 
judgeth no man, but is committed all the judgment to who? And who continues the work of the son today? His body. His body. So we are supposed to bring about the judgment and the justice of God to the earth. Verse 30. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will. You see, we, we are not supposed to be a group of a bunch of people seeking their own. We're supposed to be seeking God's judgment and justice upon the earth. Amen. All right. Now, let's go to uh, Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 4, verse 4 to 6. And there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat, for a place of refuge, and for a convert from the storm and from rain. Yes, go ahead. Um, I want you to read uh, chapter 4 from verse uh, 4 to 6. And when the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem, from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies a cloud and smoke by day and a shining of flaming fire by night. For upon all the glory shall be a defense and there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat and for a place of refuge and for a convert from storm and from rain. Okay, now listen closely. Look at that verse 4 again. He said, when the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughter of Zion, which is like the symbol of the church, right? How will, now the question is, how will God purge, wash away the sins of the church? How, what is the process of it? And shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by what? Spirit of judgment. I can hear you. The spirit of judgment. By the spirit of judgments and burning. There is no judgment in the body of Christ. If there is no judgment, that's why judgment must begin where? In the house, house of God. The Lord. And there is no purging, there is no cleansing. But then, if there is no portion, no cleansing, then there is no defense and there is no glory. That's what he's trying to say in verse 5. Read verse 5 again. And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies a cloud and smoke by day and the shining of a flaming fire you by see, night. That's the glory, the approach and the coming of glory of God. What we've been dreaming of, what we've been talking about, you see, glory comes only after portion. Has taken place. Yes. For upon all the glory shall be a defense. You see, the defense is judgment. When there is judgment in place, you would automatically defend it. What God is doing, the, the glory that, it, that, that has come, it needs to be protected. And when you don't judge iniquity, you lose it. You don't protect it. Like the glory left at the Garden of Eden because Adam will not protect it and will not condemn iniquity. Yes, verse 6. And there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat and for a place of refuge and for a convert, a covert from storm and from rain. You see, there will be covering, there will be protection because judgment is established. May God help us Amen. to be people of judgment and justice of God. Amen? And... Uh, you know, we could keep on reading from uh, verses, uh, Isaiah 5, from verses 1 to, uh, to 7, but, uh, you know, but we're not going to continue now. Let's look at other scriptures. Isaiah chapter 5, I mean, sorry, Acts chapter 5, verses 1 to 14. Let's see how this scripture we saw in, in Isaiah is coming to operation in practical manifestation in the New Testament. Acts chapter 5, verse 1 to 14. 1 through 14. 